Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. This evening, I, my guest is Ms. Carolyn Flowers. She's the CEO of Charlotte Area Transit System. How are you doing, Ms. Flowers? I'm doing fine. Thank you for having me on oh, the show. God, thank you for coming on the show. Nearly two years anniversary coming up as far as CEO of CATS. What would be considered some of your major accomplishments? I think the major accomplishment at this point is being able to advance our long-range transit plan. And in the economic climate that we've been uh, under, to be able to advance the Blue Line Extension Project and come up with some innovative uh, financing options for the Red Line to the north section of the county are the two biggest accomplishments, as well as maintaining service quality and the service levels that we're providing. What do you consider to be the major reasons for Charlotte having a mass transit? Well, if you look at Charlotte and the growth in the southeast, and Charlotte has is, is been uh, designated as, in the last census, as one of the fastest growing cities in this country, um, as you plan for land use and options for mobility in the future, uh, having a mass transit system is key to being able to get people from their home to jobs, to medical appointments, to school, and having a viable public transportation system allows you to do that. As far as um, support, what type of support does CATS receive from the community? I would say that CATS receives a lot of support, uh, starting out with the reaffirmation of the sales taxes um, initiative back in 2007 with over 70 percent of the uh, voters here reaffirming that they still wanted to be taxed for public transit, as well as our, our customer surveys. We have probably about 93 percent of those customers surveyed they responded that service quality was high on our system. Let's talk a little about the status of the Blue Line <laughs> extension project. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, we're, we're making some major milestones, and um, we just had a public meeting this past week okay. for comments on the environmental impact statement. Uh, we also obtained this past summer uh, support from North Carolina DOT in terms of commitment for the construction costs. And we're moving through the federal process and we hope to have a record of decision in December and that that will allow us to move into final design next spring. And our target is by next fall to have a commitment from the federal government for a full funding grant agreement which would pay 50% of the construction costs of that project. Mm, so we have some major milestones coming right. in the next year. Oh, that's <laughs> outstanding. Mm. What's the difference between the South Corridor Blue Line and the extension of University City? Well, the South Corridor is the existing uh, alignment that we have in service. And I, I think there's some differences in terms of uh, the construction complexity between the South Corridor and the extension. Um, we'll be coming through a major railroad right of way, sharing railroad right of way with North Carolina DOT, Amtrak, um, Norfolk Southern, I think CSX intersects, okay. and North Carolina Railroad. So it's a lot more complex in terms of the safety barriers and issues that we have to face. And then we're going to come out onto North Tryon at um, Old Concord Road, and we will be running in the street for a very long segment. We, we have a very short street segment in the south sector. And so we'll be coming out in the street and running all the way up to UNC Charlotte. So you have to plan for the safety issues, the security issues, and then ensure that you have a very uh, good running alignment. Talking about safety, I mean, cats has had an outstanding record of safety. Where's I, some wood? I, <laughs> knock, where, knock. <laughs> where does that come from? <laughs> that comes from planning and execution. Yes, ma'am. Um, you have to ensure that you have a good safety plan, that, that all of your employees are trained properly, mm -hmm. 
uh, that they know how to respond in an emergency situation and that you continue to be vigilant and monitor what you're doing because your safety record is what people expect from you. Correct. Okay, um, how is CATS viewed within the state and federal level? I would say we're viewed very well now. Um, um, if you look at Charlotte, uh, once we had the opening of the Blue Line, Correct. there's been over 90 other municipalities that have visited and wanted to see the model that we have here in the South Corridor. Uh, we have a, an exemplary model of land use, integration, and transit. And uh, the federal government has said that CATS has it right. Mm -hmm. And uh, they use us as an example um, over and over when they talk about land use and transit. And um, we're viewed very highly by the state. Uh, and, you know, we do have a commitment from the state in terms of not only the Blue Line, but support for the Red Line commuter rail project, too. Do uh, other agencies, do they um, kind of like look at the cast that you have, your process, and do they kind of follow you? Yes, um, and that is also when we have all these inner city visits Correct. from other transit agencies and chambers. Um, you know, transit is always up front. Uh, we have presentations to them. Uh, our own chamber, you know, ensures that we're engaged on, in their advocacy, uh, trips to D.C., and they support us a lot, too. So I think that, you know, those are key uh, elements in terms of ensuring that, you know, Charlotte has a lot of visibility. Where are we in the development of the 2030 system plan for transit? Well, the vision is the same. Um, and I think that's what we've been going through in the last year and a half um, with the downturn in the economic uh, climate. We've had a lot more challenges in terms of having sufficient funding to deliver that plan. And we have a, a very large funding gap to be able to deliver all of the corridors uh, in the time that we had in the original plan. But what we have done is um, prioritize and look at ways that we can deliver the first two priorities, which is the Blue Line Extension and the Red Line um, Light Rail, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, Commuter Rail Project. I know we're facing a lot of, econ the economy has been really challenging. Very. <laughs> How have you been able to handle the financial aspect of it? Well, I actually had a very extensive budgeting background. Okay. And so I think the model that we have is that we're running a business and we have to focus on our core responsibilities. And our core responsibilities are mass transit and ensuring that we deliver mass transit to this area and make sure that we you know, deliver uh, convenient, on time, and quality service. And so what we've done is go through, you know, our budget and our administrative plans and basically focused on those responsibilities that are required to deliver the service and those things that are nice to have or didn't really contribute Correct. to our core business, we've eliminated. And so we've cut our administrative expenses by 8%. Uh, we reduced uh, 29 positions out of our budget in the last year. And we also uh, have, you know, just looked at other ways of being more efficient and effective. And we've been able to not reduce the level of service that we have on the streets, which is key to making sure that everyone has a way to get around in this area. With the prices of gas mm. that mm -hmm. we're talking about, why is it so beneficial that we are able to use the transit system? Well, gasoline pricing Correct. is a, is a double-edged sword for transit because it's one of our key cost elements. Okay. So, you know, we also have to manage um, the changes and the variability in fuel pricing. But, you know, for the public, it offers them an option to uh, not being in their car and absorbing that increased cost. Because um, we have the capacity on the system and we also have the route structure that can get many people 
to uh, work or to appointments and you know offer them the mobility and access that they need but you know it is it is a double-edged sword for us when the price goes up mm. okay if we look at some of the buses and the your railway you have advertisement going on what did that come from and how beneficial is that well Advertising is a way for us to augment our revenue stream. Um, you know, most of our revenues are coming from sales taxes, which has been very volatile. Uh, we also have, you know, the fare box is where actually people get on to our equipment and pay to use it. Um, and that has fluctuated with the economy because uh, there is a, a higher level of unemployment than we had previously. So our ridership dipped, but it has, has uh, rebounded. So what advertising does is offer us another stream of revenue that can augment the, uh, the volatility in sales taxes. And so we're looking at you know ancillary revenues, leveraging the assets that we have to provide ways that we can sustain the level of service. Has it been successful? Yes. <laughs> Um, we just started advertising this fiscal year, which Correct. started July 1, and we have already booked um, the revenue level that we have budgeted for this fiscal year in the first three months. Hmm. And um, so I think that is a testament to the decision that we made, um, and it will provide a good source for us in the future. And with the DNC coming, it also offers more opportunity for us because this is going to be a national market and have a lot of visibility. What challenges do you see coming from the DNC no. coming to Charlotte? <laughs> Many. <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> Multiple faceted. <laughs> but you're handling it real well. I think that I can say that we have a very good team and that our team is um, working hard to prepare for it. Uh, we have the commitment of everyone in the organization to provide the level of quality that we want the DNC to see. We'll be on the world stage here. And um, this is an opportunity for us to show off what we have here in Charlotte and what kind of service we can deliver. And we have one of the best in the country and because of you in your staff. I can honestly say that Catherine doing real well, man. Well, thank you. <laughs> real well. Green cap buses. We have them, we see them a lot on Moorhead. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about those. That is our sprinter service that runs to the airport. Mm -hmm. um, it is um, kind of a hybrid bus rapid transit system, and bus rapid transit systems are um, probably a higher level of bus service than you see on the local service because it has amenities. Uh, we have, you know, the shelters. It has limited stops, which increases the speed. Correct. And, uh, and then also there are other elements that, you know, work to increase the boarding time and make it, uh, you know, a better ride. Uh, we have hybrid buses, hybrid gasoline buses that we're using, so there's another green element there besides their, the green color. <laughs> so um, it is a precursor along the alignment that would be the streetcar going to the airport, and it definitely provides a great service from the uptown area to the airport, and the buses are equipped to take the luggage. Mm. I know we're talking about the, I know you mentioned the streetcar. Ah. <laughs> How important is that to have that coming into Charlotte? Well, when you're designing a network, you want to be able to use the best tool in your toolbox for whatever um, you need. And so we're at, in the 2030 plan, it was a multimodal plan that had um, a mixture of light rail, bus rapid transit, streetcar, and uh, you know, that is going to augment the backbone, which is our local bus system. And uh, so streetcar has been planned uh, to go out the West Corridor, out the West Beatty's Ford uh, Road area, and out to the airport. And that is um, a project 
that has already uh, been green-lighted with an urban circulator grant by the federal government and it will build the first mile and a half that will open in 2015. And uh, you know, from that point, we'll be looking for opportunities in the city and the region to uh, fund the extension all the way out. Um, I would like to say congratulations. You won the Outstanding Woman Award. I applaud you. What is that award for? And tell the audience a little bit about that. What does that mean for you? Well, uh, the Charlotte Business Journal um, selects 25 women uh, annually for uh, their achievements in business. Um, mine came uh, because of the work that we had done, and I say we because it wasn't just me. Yes, we as an agency had done to ensure that we could continue to move forward with the Blue Line Extension. And um, so we looked at uh, ways that we could reduce the scope and uh, deliver the project actually earlier than we planned. And uh, so uh, I was nominated and, and the, the award was given out. And it's, it's, uh, it's heartwarming actually to be uh, recognized in the community for the work that you do, yes, the work that you're paid to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, so I was uh, very happy to get that award and uh, very honored to get that award. For the viewing audience, I know we don't know a lot about yourself. Tell us a little bit about Ms. <laughs> Carolyn Flowers. Well, as we all know, I'm new to Charlotte. Correct. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And uh, I was born in the South. I was born in Jackson, Mississippi, but I grew up in Los Angeles, California. And uh, Los Angeles is a different place, okay. <laughs> a very that different place for Charlotte. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, I went to school in Los Angeles from second grade on. Um, you know, I had parents uh, who didn't go to college but wanted their kids to go to college. And so, you know, the biggest thing that I had as a child was having to go to the library uh, every two weeks and having to check out 10 books and read them. Right. <laughs> and so I had, you know, parents that were very focused on our education. And uh, so I went to UCLA undergrad and I did a year of graduate work at American University in International Studies and then I came back to UCLA and got an MBA in Finance and Marketing. God, that's a lot <laughs> of things. Being the CEO, what does that mean to Ms. Carolyn Flowers? It means responsibility, accountability to not only my employees but to the public and all the stakeholders. Everyone in this city invests in, sh in CATS by virtue of your purchases that fund us. Uh, sales taxes is the largest portion of our revenue and uh, it means that I am accountable to everyone in this county and the buck stops with me. <laughs> right. To the young ladies that's watching the show and they're watching you, how, how was it really, how hard was it to get to where you're at right now? Well, it wasn't easy because I am in a traditional um, male-dominated ind industry. Um, but all I have to say is to not only females, but to males, right. you have to persist with confidence. And that you have to have confidence in yourself and your ability to do, to learn, and to basically achieve. <laughs> Where do you see yourself at five years from now? I mean, Hopefully standing out there cutting a ribbon on a light rail line. <laughs> and it's going to happen too. It's going to happen. I, I'd like to see the um, transportation network advance in Charlotte. I'd like to be, you know, part of the legacy that delivers um, the next level for Charlotte. And uh, and this has been a good experience for me, and I and I think it was a learning experience for me to come here, and to, you know change from Los Angeles, and not just run a bus system, but to be able to plan, uh, develop, and and move into construction of a of a project. Speaking on the 
What does Ms. Carolyn Flowers enjoy doing as far as away from the cat system? <laughs> hmm. Having a nice glass of wine. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. Um, reading. Um, let's see. Uh, you know, just having time to decompress. Mm -hmm. um, there, you know, transit, when you, when you take a transit job, you know it's a 24-7 job yes, because there's always something going on with the service. And if there's not service on the street, then you're preparing for the next day's service. And uh, so it is, it's just great when you have, you know, just some time to decompress and time to be with friends. <laughs> I heard that you you were a great fan of Sarah Bond. Oh yes. <laughs> what is it about the music that that pleases Miss Flowers? I had a father who was just a big jazz aficionado, and uh, when I was growing up, my father controlled the television <laughs> and the radio, <laughs> the record player. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yes, so I grew up. Grew up listening to jazz, and uh, and I love jazz vocalists. Um, I've always been a fan of a traditional uh, jazz vocalist, and uh, and so my father was a big fan of Sarah Vaughan and Ella Fitzgerald and Billie Holiday, and uh, that's what I grew up listening to, and uh, so um, I, I just kept an appreciation of that and. And, and one of the greatest things that we would do as a family, uh, we would always go to the Playboy Jazz Festival, okay. and uh, we'd go there for the weekend and enjoy it as a family. So um, it's what I grew up listening to, and that's what I enjoy. Let's talk about your parents. How inspirational were they in your life? Um, very much so, and my father just died last year, Sorry and right after I moved to Charlotte, and so it's a big loss for me. Yes. Um, hmm. But um, my mom is still in L.A., and uh, biggest cheerleaders and fans that I have, mm -hmm. and those people who wanted me to be successful and supported me, even when I probably frustrated them. <laughs> no, but I'm... It has to be really, I mean, it has to be really touching to them to see the success that their daughter has made. You know, that's a, that's a real great achievement, that what you're doing. I think they're very proud, and uh, I don't want to get misty. Because, <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah, I, I don't want to get misty. <laughs> that's the thing on this, I don't want to get misty. Yeah, because one of the last conversations I had with my father the day before he died, he said how proud he was. <laughs> Because mm. you're doing a great job. Mm. Thank you. You know, and I'm, I think sometimes we take for granted that our family will be here forever. You know, and I'm, they did a great job with you, man. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And we're just glad to have you here in Charlotte with the with the cat system. You know, and I'm, you're doing an outstanding job. And what would you consider be the the best things that you like about being the CEO? Talking with the employees and talking to the customers, um, you have to keep in touch. The pulse, the pulse is those people who deliver the service and those people who receive the service, and uh, so you have to be able to um, talk to them, get their input. Sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad, but you need to know how they feel about what you're doing and and how you're doing. Because my job is basically a facilitator. Okay. Um, I have to make sure that for our employees that I get the resources and for the public I have to ensure that we deliver the resources and we optimize their investment. You know, um, Ms. Flowers, as we, as we go through this whole year coming up, what do you see as far as what would you like to see happen? I want to see us deliver the world's best service for the Democratic National Convention. I want to see us get the um, full funding grant agreement from the federal government mm -hmm. and move into construction. 
and I want us to see, see us come up with a viable financial plan to um, build and put into service the commuter rail to the North Line. And I want to see us come up with the funding to do a study that will lead us to um, trans and transportation options um, in the Independence area. There's a great need for transit, public transportation, and rapid transit in that area. Transportation Secretary Ray Hood was in Charlotte last month, and he presented with $25 million mm -hmm. for the streetcar. How does the streetcar fit into CATS? Well, the streetcar, as I said, was part of our 2030 plan, and it was uh, envisioned to come out Central Avenue and through the Betty's Ford right. Corridor. So this is um, an element of our plan, and CATS will be operating that. It will be integrated into our light rail system, and it's just an opportunity for us to expand the transportation network here in Charlotte. So it's a good thing. <laughs> It's an outstanding thing. So, um, Ms. Flowers, as we come to the end of the show, what would be one of the things that you would say to the viewing audience? Well, I love living here in Charlotte. Um, this is probably one of the best places to live in this country. It's beautiful, and I'm glad to be a part of Charlotte and to be accepted in Charlotte. Ms. Flowers, thank you for coming on the show, and anytime you want to come back on, you're more than welcome. Continue doing the outstanding work that you do for Charlotte. Well, thank you for the support and the opportunity to be with you. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we have Ms. Carolyn Flowers. She's the CEO of Charlotte Area, our CEO of Charlotte <laughs> Area Transit System. And we love her, and I just want to say thank her for coming on the show. Audience, thank you for watching. Come on every Thursday at 5.30. Join my website, www paulmbrown.webs.com 2010 Informational Educational Program the award. I just want to thank God for making all this happen and to each one of you, you be encouraged. Thank you.